Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this uh, meeting of Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole Council Audit and Governance Committee. Uh, welcome to members of the public uh, and to the press. And uh, going straight to the agenda, uh, can I ask uh, Mr Hanton to deal with item one? Apologies. Thank you. Um, thank, you, thank you, Chairman. Um, apologies from Councillor White, and Councillor Stribley is here as Councillor White substitute. Uh, Mr. Hanson, are you going to deal with uh, matters of procedure uh, next, please, uh, before we go on to uh, declarations? Um, uh, uh, Chairman, I've also been asked by um, Councillor Brown, who's the portfolio holder for finance, to say that he was intending to be at the meeting tonight, but has had um, an family emergency and is unable to, um, to be here. Uh, thank you very much, Mr West. Um, I can't do very much about it myself, but I'll ask uh, everybody to use their microphones. Uh, can everybody hear me? So it was Mr. Hanton you couldn't hear. We'll try to do, we'll endeavour to do better, Mr. West. Uh, moving on to item three, uh, Mr. Hanton. Check this is working. This is working, okay, yep. Yeah, um, a bit nearer. Um, I, I haven't received any declarations of interest, Chairman. I don't know whether there's any others, any members who wish a declaration now. Are there any other declarations? Yes, just Vice Chairman? Just my normal one that I'm an auditor by business and so therefore. Yes, I, you declared that last time, Councillor. Well, I declare it every time. I, um, don't, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that you do need to, no, but uh, it is noted. Vice Chairman? Uh, yes, I'm a member of the Lower Gardens Trust. Thank you. Are there any others? No, that list is then complete. Um, Item four is the confirmation of minutes of the meeting held on the 25th of July uh, 2019. Uh, first of all, are you uh, uh, content that those are an accurate reflection of the meeting that took place? Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Are you content, therefore, that I sign those minutes? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, going on to uh, item five, uh, public issues, uh, a paper has been uh, tabled regarding uh, a public question and I'll ask uh, Ms Coulter if she could just uh, deal with the procedure uh, for that item. Uh, thank you, thank you Chairman. Uh, I understand that Mr Gattrell, who's submitted the question, isn't present and he's advised that if he's not present, he understands that under the Council's protocols, my question will be responded to by way of a written answer and I can confirm, Chairman, that um, a full written answer will be provided to Mr Gattrell pursuant to that um, procedure. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Executive. Thank you, Chairman. So I'll just say that Councillor Bartlett has just received a message from Mr Gattrell giving his apologies. So just Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cox? Will we also receive copies of the answer as well? Uh, yes, and it will be published as well. Thank you. Item 6 on the agenda, which is the independent investigation and response to a deputation regarding the Kinson Community Centre. Um, uh, before I ask the officer to introduce it, just for the information of members of the public who are present, uh, there are two reports, uh, the second of which is confidential, uh, and uh, when we get to that report, uh, we will have asked members of the public uh, to leave the room for a short while, and then you can come back after we've dealt with that part of the business. Uh, so moving straight into item six. Um, I will ask um, the officer, Kelly Ansell, if she could introduce the report on the white pages, um, just to give some background. And my suggestion, members, is that we then go quickly into the confidential report so that we can ask uh, any questions that we have on those uh, before coming back up to deal with the recommendations. Uh, so with your agreement, we'll go about it in that way. Uh, Ms Ansell, could you introduce the report, please? 
Thank you, Chairman. So this is a continuation of the report that was provided to um, an Audit and Governance Committee uh, in, in July. And at the time, um, members were, wanted to see further information relating to the investigations that were, were um, undertaken um, in, independently um, now some time ago. Um, they, they've now been provided to the committee. Um, and also what, what was requested was that officers seek uh, formal responses from Kinston Community Association relating to those reports and their findings and the recommendations, as well as um, the, the response detailed in the last report, um, to, which was a, a response to the deputations that had been made at a, at a previous committee. Um, so um, just in relation to... Uh, those requests, just to confirm that those requests have been made on several occasions and no response has been received from, from Kinston Community Association. However, just to reassure members that all of the recommendations that were noted from those independent um, reports have been um, completed, including uh, several requests now for uh, offers for Kinston Community Association to enter into uh, intermediation with the Council in order to foster um, improve relationships going forward. I think um, we can be satisfied that appropriate action has been taken to address the complaints that, that, that have been raised um, and the allegations have been considered in the fullness of the evidence that was provided um, to that investigation. And we remain hopeful as officers um, delivering services and, and working with community associations to, de to deliver services out in, in community centres that, that, en that the engagement will come and that that mediation um, can be positive in fostering that, that positive relation relationship going forward in order that, that the, 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 the many services that are provided at, at Kinston Community Centre can continue to be provided by Kinston Community Association and out to the community. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Ansell. Um, are there any questions for Ms. Ansell at this stage before we go below the line? Councillor Andrews. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I have a call this afternoon from Councillor Brown, who is on, I think, one of the trustees of the Kinston Community Centre, explaining that he had a medical emergency he had to deal with. Um, he did mention to me that he had rung somebody, an officer at the council, explaining about the Kinston Community Centre. Uh, hadn't, yes, as we've been told, uh, reported back with their observations. Uh, he did seek to try and explain to me that they had had staffing difficulties, illness and everything like that, and wanted to make uh, some comments and uh, remarks on this, but uh, um, they were unable to do so uh, at, the, at the present time. So I don't know which particular officer he spoke to today, but I would just like to put that on record. Thank you. I can confirm that I haven't, I'm not aware that anyone in my team has been, has been contacted and I haven't had any contact myself. Councillor Stripley. Um, Chairman, I, I would only comment that yes, all organisations do have difficulties from time to time and, and we all do, but to have no response over a period of months in spite of, I'm not familiar with all the complaint, but to have no response over a period of months in spite of numerous reminders seems to me not acceptable under any terms for an organisation that is meant to be representing a whole community. Well, Ms. Ansford, you're on the front line with this one. Um, do you want to just say a little bit more about the efforts that you've gone to to get that engagement? Because you know, there have been uh, direct costs over £12,000 to the former Bournemouth Borough Council, plus, of course, a considerable amount of officer time. And uh, I think we'd all like to see this matter wrapped up permanently and a, a, fa a sound way found to go forward for the future. So I yeah, don't know if you can help us further. Absolutely. So I, I can confirm that once the independent, um, the, 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 the independent reports were received and the recommendations made around single points of contact, and, uh, and the, the recommendations around mediation, those offers, uh, that information was confirmed immediately. Um, those offers were made immediately and have been repeated on several occasions. Uh, and, and as I've noted in the report, there are a number of different occasions, um, 25th, uh, sorry, for the 6th of August, 29th of August, and 30th of August, and again on email over in the, on the 16th of September, repeated to, to, to engage. 
Um, so from, from the council's perspective, in terms of, uh, of the officer's commitment to moving this forward, we're absolutely you know, wanting to work with Kinston Community Association positively as we, as we go forward. A number of the complaints that were, that were made and investigated in the report are now very historical, and I think it's about you know, moving, moving forward, having drawn a line um, uh, in terms of, of, of engaging. As I say, there's no doubt in, in my mind that the community centre is delivering really important services um, in, in the Kinston area. There are, it, it's heavily used, um, and we've been able to make some positive strides um, with regard to issues um, such as fire safety. That, that has definitely moved on positively um, in, in the last year or so. Uh, so, whilst there have been limitations in terms of that engagement, um, in specifically in relation to the context of this report, there are some, a number of positive aspects that have moved, moved forward. Um, I think what we, we need now is to get to that point of, of mediation. Thank you very much for that. And for those uh, members who may not be aware, uh, this matter, I think, first came to audit and governance under the former Bournemouth Borough Council back in January this year, from my recollection. Yeah, um, and I know that certainly from that point, if not from some time before, officers have been very closely engaged in trying to resolve matters. And I know you and I have had con uh, conversations about it, as I'm sure you have with others as well. So I don't think there's any lack of effort or will uh, as far as that part of the matter is concerned. No, absolutely. And as I said, I just could, can't re reiterate strongly enough that, that we will continue to make those, uh, 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 to engage and to, and to make those, those offers um, so that we can agree how we move forward in a, in a much more positive way. Uh, now, members, I'd like, if we can, to move forward so that we can come back to the white pages and the recommendations for the benefit of members of the public, very conscious of that. So if I could have a move, please, uh, to go below the line, and then we can discuss uh, and, and ask questions of the green pages before doing that. Uh, well, uh, well, Mr West, I'll take advice from the uh, monitoring officer as to whether it is valid for you to make a statement, uh, but I don't think that it would be possible uh, at least until we come back above the line anyway. Uh, Ms Coulter, would you like to make a comment? I apologise, Chairman, I couldn't actually hear clearly um, what the request was for. I think it's just outside of the, the normal um, procedures for statements uh, for members of the public for, for that to happen unless, as, unless the um, member of the public is, is representing the Kinsham Community Association, but formally we've had no response from the association, so I, think it, I don't think it would be in order. No, so I think, Mr West, that is ruled out of order. You've given no advance notice of such a comment or statement, um, and I don't think it would be possible to uh, make one now. Um, I'd like to move this matter on so that we can discuss it properly and fully in public once we've dealt with the confidential issues. So could I have a move, please, from a member of the committee? Councillor Cox? Can I, can I move, actually, that the item is deferred? Uh, I, I applaud the officer's um, attempts uh, to, to make... Uh, contact with Kinsons, and I wholeheartedly agree with Councillor Stribley in terms of the disappointment that they haven't responded so far. But I think some of the, the contents that's, that is in this report is, is, in my opinion, quite damning. I'm not impressed with the report whatsoever, uh, and therefore I would like to see it to be deferred uh, for the next meeting so that we do get a response from Kinsons, because as you quite rightly said, it's gone on long enough and we might as well get... Uh, a, a proper answer to this, uh, rather than it just being under the, under the carpet, um, so to speak. I would second that, Mr Chairman. Uh, Mr West, Mr. West uh, I haven't invited you to speak. You have had a response from the monitoring officer. Uh, it would not be appropriate for you to make comments at this meeting uh, without any advance notice. I you can write you can write to the committee or indeed to an officer at any time of your choosing thank you Councillor Stripley 
Um, I, I, hear, I hear what you've said, Councillor Cox. The trouble is that at our last meeting, uh, we resolved to bring this back this time so that we could bring it to a conclusion. Every time it's delayed, um, there is more officer input, more cost to the council taxpayer, um, and time moves on in terms of getting the matters resolved to the operation of the Kingston Community Centre. Um, and my concern is that if we defer uh, again, then we won't have brought this to a resolution. It's a bit like Brexit, isn't it? Um, the, can, I, can I just suggest that we defer for one last time, and then that's it? They have, they have, they have, they've, they've already made, they've already made uh, comments that they've, they've had severe problems. Uh, I'd give them one last chance. If they don't, then I completely accept that they're, they're, they're at fault and, they, and we, we can move on. But uh, just give them one last time and then we can deal with it. I would, I would propose that we move into confidential. Councillor Bartlett. Thank you. I think at this point of order, Councillor Cox has already made a move which has been seconded. I think we have an obligation now to vote on that move. Thank you. That is, that is correct, but I want to get the context right with regard to the procedure that we adopted at the last minute. So I want to make sure that it is a valid move that we can consider. Um, and I'd like, I'd like some response, actually, from officers who are dealing with this so that we get a better understanding of what the implications are if we go ahead uh, and uh, take forward with this move. Any comments that you'd like to make, Ms Ansel? Only as I said that, that you know, a number of the matters are, are historical. This is an, in, uh, an independently uh, conducted investigation that has made uh, a number of findings and recommendations. There was a lack of, um, of evidence provided by Kinston Community Asso Association um, at, during the, the investigation to support uh, a number of their, uh, 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 the, the majority in fact, of the, of the allegations that, that had been made. Um, and I think... It, it, I'm, I'm unclear about the benefit of um, continuing to reflect back uh, issues um, which, as I say, are historical. There are many um, staff who are, who are no longer employed by the council noted in, in these reports. Uh, and I think it's, as I say, for me, I think mediation is, in, is the absolute priority here in terms of allowing um, Kinston Community Association to discuss that in a structured, those issues in a structured way um, in order that we can find a, a, a way forward. I'm not sure um, to, until we understand what the response might be um, to make any other judgment than that, to be honest. Uh, and could I perhaps just have a legal comment, Ms Coulter, in terms of if we go with what Councillor Cox has moved, um, whether that is... Um, in, in conformance with uh, what we decided at the last meeting. Uh, <coughs> Chairman, yes, if, if you as a committee uh, wanted to defer the items, then, then, then you could. Um, but just looking at the recommendations, it is to note and note and to support. So um, there is no decision in a sense to defer. It is merely consideration. So I, I think just some clarity around the the rationale for deferral will probably help officers then if any more preparation is needed or, or required for the further meeting or whether it's just deferring consideration of the confidence papers until you may um, have a further response from the Kinson Community Association. But I think Ms. Ansel has already responded on that part. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, in that case, there is a move uh, which has been seconded uh, by Councillor Andrews um, and, and I take it that move is still uh, your intention. Um, in that case, we will go forward and debate that uh, move which has been properly seconded. Um, would, you like, would you like to speak a bit just, more just on Just responding that to uh, Tanya's point, um, I accept that, but if, if, if the answers from the Kingston Community Centre were acceptable, or, then we could, we could quite happily agree the, uh, the motions or the recommendations in this report. However, if they're not, if, if they reveal things that are not very good, then we might want to change these recommendations. So that would be the, the reason for deferring it. The, as, I, as I repeat, the allegations were very serious, and therefore I think we should give them, uh, give them one, more go, one more chance to answer some of the questions. Are there any other speakers? No? 
Uh, well, in that case, uh, we can go straight to a vote on the proposal to defer until the next uh, meeting of audit and governance. Um, could I have this by a show of hands? All those in favour of the move, please indicate. One, two, three, four. And those against? One, two, three, four. Uh, so that move is lost, Councillor Cox. Uh, so could I now look to a move to go below the line to consider the Green Papers? Move to go below the line. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Stribley. Um, second that. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Uh, could I ask uh, all those members of the public uh, present uh, if they could leave the room for a short time while we consider the confidential reports? Uh, thank you very much indeed for your patience uh, to members of the public. Um, it took a little bit longer than we perhaps had anticipated. Uh, I'm going to ask um, Ms Ansell uh, if she could uh, give us um, a, a fuller update on the report and then I'll take any questions uh, from members before we get to the recommendations. Ms Ansell. Can I just clarify on the update that you... The, 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 a fuller update on the on the report. Well, the, the what I was keen to do is to make sure the members of the public who perhaps heard the update earlier uh, understand the position of this report and what it is uh, trying to achieve. Uh, and of course, we can't refer any of us uh, to those items on the green confidential pages. Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, following following some some obviously some consideration of the uh, of the reports, um, the independent reports by Ibex Gale, um, there is a, 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 a we need to consider how we move forward very positively with Kinston Community Association in terms of um, engaging in mediation. Um, it, it's been noted that it's um, deeply regretful that there has been no response to date, um, but that we would obviously seek to uh, to, to engage with them in the future um, and that the committee are now uh, to support the recommendations uh, noted in the original report um, are seeking uh, an up at the next meeting which we will be happy to, to provide. So are there any questions or comments from members? Uh, there aren't. Uh, could, I, could I look to a move? Councillor Cox perhaps? Okay. Okay. Can't hear you. Uh, no, Councillor West, I thought I made it clear earlier on. If you wanted to communicate uh, after this meeting with members of the committee or indeed with officers, you're perfectly free to do so. You haven't given notice uh, of participation in the meeting. There are procedures and you haven't complied with them. So the short answer, I'm afraid, is no. Uh, but could you wait and listen uh, to what those recommendations might be? Um, and I'm sure that, that you can make those representations outside of the meeting. Uh, Councillor Cox. I'd, I'd like to um, move a few adjustments uh, to the recommendations. Um, one is... Can we, we start with them in order that we've got them? So if you're moving any that are already there or amending them, do them in that order. If you're adding any, take it as number four or number five. I, I propose uh, number one. Uh, I propose number two, but add the words with deep regret uh, to note with deep regret that there is no formal response. Um, I would propose uh, a, a third item which would state in future, uh, that we recommend in future investigation reports after it in association with the complainant. And uh, another item would be that we urge K Kings, uh, Kinson uh, Community Association to respond urgently uh, to the council uh, and the, the response of which will be distributed to the members of this committee. And then I would support the final one as, as number five. Can I just check Democratic Services have got that, Ms Coulter? Uh, thank you, Chairman. It's in respect of the recommendation regarding drafting the um, investigations. I think Councillor Cook said that future investigation reports are drafted in association no, no. with the complainant. Yeah. In terms, of reference. terms of reference. I, did, yes, I think it would be helpful if um, the recommendation was that the terms of reference for any investigations are wherever possible 
uh, prepared um, you know, by agreement between parties. Yes. That is what happens in any event, but certainly that would be explicit. There are occasions, I don't know if this was one, where you don't get that agreement and we have to just go ahead and draft our own. So it's not always possible. I agree. So if we could, if we could do that, it would be really helpful. I agree. So that means there are five recommendations coming out of this report, I think. That's correct. Um, could I ask Democ Services just to read those out so that we're all quite clear as to what it is that we're being asked to consider? Are you ready for that, Mr Hanson, or do you need a moment or two more? Thank you very much. The recommendation, um, Chairman, is that uh, the committee note the content of the independent investigator reports relating to complaints raised by KCA. Uh, and then two, um, note with deep regret that no formal response has been provided by KCA in response to the independent investigator's findings or the deputation response reported to the committee on 25th of July uh, 2019. And then um, a new three, um, that, um, th uh, that terms of reference uh, for any future investigations are, wherever possible, drafted in association with the complainant. And then a new four, um, urge uh, 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 KCA to respond urgently to the Council's inquiries and that the response responses from KCA be distributed to this committee. And finally, uh, five, um, to uh, support the mediation between the Council and KCA. Does that reflect your moves, Councillor Cox? Excellent. Uh, uh, do you have a second that, We're willing to second that, Mr Chairman. So seconded by Councillor Andrews. Um, do we need to say that it's coming back? So are there any other comments, Councillor Stripley? Just a small point of order. Uh, Mr. Hand said um, terms of reference agreed with the complainant. Uh, Ms. Coulter recommended terms of reference are agreed between parties. I'm not sure which is the better option because between parties might involve more than the complainant. Ms. Coulter? I would go whichever is I think <coughs> recommended. We would probably interpret it in the same way, but it's probably clearer to say uh, agreed between the parties wherever possible because that is what you would do. Yeah. Um, and I think, chairman, yep. I think the Vice Chairman has just reminded me that uh, I'm not sure whether it was woven into there or not, but we would be looking for an update at our next regular quarterly meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I think that was the intention, Councillor Cox. So that is woven in there somewhere so that we will actually that update in three months' time as to what's transpired since today. Uh, Councillor Andrews? Uh, just, um, Councillor Brown has texted me that uh, apparently he emailed Kelly Ansell and CC'd Nigel Stannard this afternoon about the matter. Um, and um, as I said earlier, he, he did ask for the matter to be deferred because of uh, medical emergency and other factors. But um, obviously, we, we debated it, and I think. What's been recommended here is a way forward to get this matter sorted once and for all and hopefully learn some valuable lessons from what happened here um, and that will give us valuable lessons hopefully as the new council in other situations that might arise in the future. Thank you. So members, if we're all done, uh, we've got um, a move on the table with five parts to it. Uh, could we take those together, please? Um, and by a show of hands, all those in favour, please indicate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's uh, unanimous. Thank you very much indeed, members, uh, for your time on that. Uh, and thank you very much, members of the public, uh, who have attended. Um, and, of course, you will get to see uh, that there is an update at the next quarterly meeting. Uh, moving on now then to item 7 on the agenda, which is the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman <coughs> Annual Report for 2018-19. Uh, Mr West.
I didn't understand half of that, but um, I'm sure that you have points that you wish to make, uh, and we've dealt with those. Um, so, item seven on the agenda, um, and I think um, this is an item uh, that uh, Mr. Osgathorpe is going to introduce. Mr. Osgathorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, members of the committee, what you have in front of you is an annual report on behalf of BCP Council looking back at last year uh, with regards to the activity with the local government and social care ombudsman. In this case, what the, the, the report is set out uh, looking back at the preceding authorities to BCP Council um, and is asking you to note the activity that took place between the preceding authority and, and the ombudsman. Um, the points I would make uh, set out in, in paragraphs 21, 22, 23, uh, which is while there's an overall reduction in the total number of complaints, um, there are more upheld than previously. However, there's no theme uh, or trend really to, for us to, to, to take account of in that regard. Uh, and that 100% of all of the complaints where a remedy was recommended by the Ombudsman have been concluded to the satisfaction of the Ombudsman and that involved a total amount of £3,203.85. Uh, going forward, BCP Council is implementing a single uh, complaint handling process so you will in future have an annual report in this regard which is focused on BCP tool rather than the preceding authorities. Thank you very much, Mr. Oscar Thorpe. Any questions for Mr. Oscar Thorpe? Councillor Cox. Can I just ask, uh, you know, how, uh, how do service users, how, how are they made aware that they can complain? Because I do find with complaints, sometimes it's more difficult to like, figure out how to go about it than, uh, than anything. Uh, there's a variety of different ways, Councillor Cox. Um, perhaps the, the most pertinent of those is that whenever... Uh, there is a complaint made to the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman. It is almost always uh, as a result of a dialogue or an exchange of views between the complainant and the council, uh, in this case BCP or the preceding authorities. And in all of our responses, we draw their attention to the fact that if in the event they're not satisfied with our response, they have the uh, ability and the right to appeal to the, to the Ombudsman. However, there is also a direct route in to the Ombudsman via their, their web footprint as well. So. Um, if there are no further questions, can we move to the recommendation, which is uh, to note uh, the reports. Um, all those in favour, please indicate. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to item 8 on the agenda, Treasury Management Monitoring Report for the period of April to August 2019. Mr. Richards. Thank you. Sets out the Council's um, Treasury Management Fund for the period 1 April 2019 to the 31st of August 2019 and the report recommends to you that you note the activity for that period and you agree to receive a formal training session on the Treasury Management Function from the Council's Treasury Advisors who are Link Assets Services. And that is good practice with regards to uh, an Audit and Governance Committee, um, particularly a new Audit and Governance Committee. Treasury Management Activity is defined, defined as the management of the Council's cash flows, its borrowings and investments, and the management of the associated risks and the pursuit of the optimum performance or return consistent with those risks. It is a requirement of the SIPFA Treasury Management Code of Practice that regular monitoring of that Treasury Management function is reported to members. Chair, the report um, goes through various um, sections and I won't go through them all in detail, but what I would like to take the opportunity to do is first of all just set the scene in the sense that, you know, with regards to within which the function is being undertaken. From an international perspective, um, concerns continue with regards to a global recession. Um, in America, there is an increasing likelihood of an interest rate cut from the current level of 2%. At this moment in time, there is no sign of an end to the trade war between the USA and China. The UK economy is dominated by the uncertainty caused by Brexit. If there is a deal, 
Interest rates are likely to rise at a gradual pace, but to a limited extent. If there is a no-deal scenario, then interest rates could go in either direction, cut the most likely next step. Traders at this moment in time are hedging their bets, particularly in that no-deal scenario, on the expectation that they consider there is an extremely high likelihood of a general election in the short term. With regards to the report, can I also take the opportunity to highlight Table 1. Table 1 sets out the interest rates forecast time of producing this report that were prepared for, by Link Asset Services. However, very unusually, earlier this week, the Treasury made a move and added 1% to the cost of borrowing from the public works loan bonds. This was a response to concerns around the amount of council borrowing, fueled by a combination of the historic low rates that we have and the council's commercial activity. So generally, where you can see PWRB rates at the bottom of that table, you predominantly can add 1% now to each of those rates based on that move by the Treasury earlier this week. The headlines from the report are that at this moment in time, the council is anticipating to receive more interest um, that it assumed when it set its budget for 1920 to the value of £95,000. With regards to interest on borrowing, at this moment in time, um, we are taking a prudent position, which assumes that we will spend in line with our budget. However, as the report sets out, much will depend on the final position that we agree with Dorset Council with regards to Christchurch share of the accumulated debt of Dorset County Council, which we are in the process of going process of actually negotiating how that is split between the two councils. Chair, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Richards. Just before you do, um, I, I appreciate there are others around this table who are probably very familiar with the Treasury management function. I've been involved in it now for many years um, but I would very strongly uh, recommend the training session uh, particularly in the light of a new council um, e even those of us who've lived and breathed this for many years will learn something from it uh, those, those who haven't uh, will learn a great deal I would suggest um, and these are uh, important issues uh, for us as members um, and I hope that we can find a time sooner rather than later at a time convenient to the majority of members, which I suspect will be uh, after office hours, um, to, to facilitate uh, that. And uh, I, I don't know how long you had in mind such a session taking, hour and a half, um, maybe? The session sessions are probably a maximum of two hours. Two hours. Well, I, I think it will be time well spent, that's my view. Uh, so, any questions for Mr. Richards, Councillor Bartlett? Uh, thank you. Uh, two questions. Uh, they both relate to borrowing. Uh, the first one is that uh, I'm used to seeing uh, Treasury uh, borrowing approved limits. Um, is it, they're not in this report. Is that because they're yet established for the new council? Or to, just to come back on Councillor Bartlett's question, Section 20 of the report indicates that in the budget set by the Shadow Authority in February 2019, um, the prudential code indicators were set out as part of that budget report and those are the ones that we are currently adhering to and what section 20 gives you the assurance that we are in line with those indicators at this stage. Thank you. And, and the second question relates to the potential impact of a PWLB interest rates increasing and what that, does that present any risk to any of the capital programmes that we've currently got? Uh, lined up. The, um, the move by the um, Treasury um, in increasing PWRB rates is something that's set you know, a number of um, local authorities into a bit of a tailspin when actually they've got active programmes where they were just about to borrow um, based on a specific interest rate. You know, what we will need to do is review any capital schemes that we've got um, that are based on potential borrowing and ensure that actually um, they are still um, viable based on the increase in interest rates. 
just to give you some assurance, however, is that predominantly interest rates that we could borrow have, have been around about the 2% mark, or if not lower, um, in current times. And what we try to do as a standard within our modelling is use 3% as a minimum. So they should still be relatively robust, but doesn't mean that we shouldn't still do that due diligence just to double check. Thank you, Chair. If there are no other questions, could we talk? Councillor Cox? Sorry, just a couple. Um, in uh, paragraph 10, um, can I just ask who's checking the, um, the calculations of the 7.75% of the debt? Um, are we just taking it on, on the auditors, or the Dorset auditors' recommendation? Um, this, with regards to the... Um, the application of the treasure model and the um, split of the debt between the two new unitary authorities, that process doesn't involve the audits. That is a negotiation between the officers of the two local authorities. However, to give you a reassurance, we've involved um, representatives of the LGA throughout that process, um, and they're committed to do, if you like, just a, a quick review at the end to make sure that it seems fair and reasonable by way of a, um, a split of that debt. Can I recommend that there is somebody checking it because, um, well, certainly if you look further down this report, there's some mathematical errors that seem to be creeping in in certain places. So I would recommend strongly that uh, somebody independent does go on and check those figures because these numbers are very large. Can you give that assurance, Mr. Yeah, yeah, as I said, you know, um, we have got the commitment from the LGA um, to actually review, you know, the final position that the two local authorities propose to agree upon. Mr. Chair, one, one other thing is, in respect of the um, uh, the on pay on paragraph 22, is it possible to have a, um, an analysis uh, there of the different? Uh, oh, people that we place our money with uh, because uh, it would be nice to see what kind of organisations we do place our money with. Um, I'm thinking particularly if, if we place it in any foreign destinations like Iceland um, uh, or, um, or any tax havens or any, any bonds by BP. I think I can predict, safely predict what Mr Richards is going to say, but uh, let's hear him say it. Can I say it anyway? Um, table 4 of the report sets out where the Council has currently got the £54.5 million pounds of um, investments and which organisations they are in. So are you happy with the list of counterparties? There is, it, it is a rigorous process. So if there are no more uh, questions from members, could we go to the recommendations? Um, and I'd like to try and take these together if we can. The first is obviously for noting. Uh, the second is to agree the training session, and I hope it will be possible to circulate members um, as soon as possible um, in, in um, conjunction with the chairman and the vice chairman. And we'll try to come back to you as timely as we can so that we can get a date that suits uh, all members, if at all possible. Uh, so, going to the vote by a show of hands, all those in favour, please indicate. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, takes us to uh, item 9, which is the BCP Council Investment Support, the One Dorset Pathology Unit. Uh, and I think, uh, Mr. Richards, you're going to introduce this paper. Thank you, Chair. Um, the purpose of this report is to present the opportunity to support one of the Council's key strategic partners in delivering a new modern pathology facility which will serve both the conurbation and the rest of Dorset. The support will be in the form of a £14.9 million investment from the Council into the Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch National Health Service Foundation Trust, which will be paid evenly in equal instalments of capital £993,000 per annum. To make this investment, the Council will need to add, on an exceptional basis, the Royal Bournemouth Christchurch Hospital to its list of approved counterparties and extend its normal five-year period for investments. The risk around the operational performance of the new Dorset, one Dorset pathology unit, will be a matter for the Royal Bournemouth Christchurch Hospital, as they will be required to make the annual payments regardless. An interest rate of 3.5% will be applied. 
This would generate the Council £4.2 million in interest over the 15-year period. The Council can achieve, currently achieve a 1.5% interest rate on a 15-year uh, investment, which would earn £2.4 million in interest to the Council over a 15-year period. Therefore, the Council has gained extra £1.8 million to recognise the extra risk of the longer than normal period and the unsecured nature of the investment in the RBCH. As emphasised in the previous report that we just looked at, all the Council's investments are made or funded via the Council's Treasury Management position. This is where BCP Council reflects the inherited investment and borrowing commitments of the previous Bournemouth, Christchurch and Portsmouth. As such, we are underborrowed and that we invest our reserves and amounts received in advance of expenditure either in external financial institutions or to reduce the extent to which we have externally borrowed. This proposal will be considered as part of that equation. Cabinet gave their support to this proposal on the 11th of September 2019. Their support and any recommendations from today's audit and governance fee will be presented to Council when they are asked to consider giving their formal approval in November. This is clearly an unusual investment for the Council in that it is an investment with a huge social value and even more unusually in that that social value will be delivered locally. Chair, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Mr Richards, and, and thank you for uh, keeping uh, me impressed of this as it came forward. Uh, we had a couple of options about audit and governance uh, on this particular matter, um, and having, spoke, having uh, talked it through with Mr Richards, it became apparent it would be better if it went to Cabinet and then came to us, uh, given the timeliness of Council following that through. Um, so I hope you members, you, I hope you agree that that was the right thing to do. Uh, but it is for us, uh, c particularly given that this introduces a new uh, counterparty, to ensure that uh, we've given it due consideration as well. Um, I don't know uh, whether Chief Executive, were you indicating you wanted to come in on this item? Right, that's fine. Uh, Councillor Bartlett. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I think this is a, a really good investment for Council. It's one of those where the uh, investment by the Council does produce a public benefit as well as some interest for the Council. So it's, to me it's a superb investment opportunity. I do have one burning question though and it's not really related to the, uh, so much to the financial aspects of this. Does anybody know where the proposed site for this building is going to be? Because I had a horrible feeling that it might be destined for the Wessex Field. In which case, uh, you know, is it going to scupper this business opportunity? Uh, because of the changes that have been made uh, recently in policy towards the Wessex Field. Chair, if I can just um, reference Councillor Bartlett to section 29 of the report, which indicates that the actual um, one Dorset pathology unit will either be built on land owned currently by the Royal Bournemouth Christchurch and Hospital at Castellanese Bournemouth or on land purchased by the Council, which is currently part of the joining Wessex Field site. I think they're keen uh, as an organisation to, to move on with the development of the One Dorset facility. So I think, you know, actually that you know, timeliness will come into a factor as to potentially where they build this. Thank you. If it's of any comfort, Councillor Bartlett, the former Bournemouth Council uh, had been working with uh, the hospital uh, around the sort of jigsaw of different facilities going on different parts of the two sites and there was always a flexibility if you move one you've got to move another and so on obviously so I think that flexibility still exists. Uh, Councillor Cox. Can I, can I ask has the, the change in the, uh, the public works load uh, percentage had any effect on this? The answer to the question is, is no in the sense that what we are looking to do here is place an investment. The Public Works Loan Board talks about borrowing. You know, to be clear, we are not borrowing to invest because that would be unlawful. You might not be doing it directly, but if you if you if you what if we wanted to invest 14.9 million in I don't know a housing estate, uh, then that money is is being diverted here, and therefore we'd have to borrow money to invest in somewhere else. So. You may say that, but it's, in reality, it, it, that could be the effect. 
I think I accept what the council is saying with regards to the fact that we are under borrowed as a council and that uh, actually you know, the whole um, aspect of your management is looking at your borrowings and your investments side by side by way of your cash flow management as part of that process. But I suppose what I'm trying to um, emphasise is that we will not be directly borrowing to invest as part of this proposal. If there are no further questions. Yes, Sorry, Councillor Stripley. Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you. I'm, I, uh, Councillor Bartlett partly asked, on, asked my question about the location of, of this. But the Bournemouth, Christchurch, and Poole hospitals are about to merge into one new NHS trust. And the debate on the moment is what, what it will be called. Um, so will that fact that it won't be the Royal Bournemouth and Christchurch Hospital probably from next year on make any difference? And I was also going to ask with the uh, route into Wessex Field apparently being stopped dead, um, the government was, is offering the newly merged hospitals, if the merger goes, finally goes through, £26 million towards a road off the spur road into the hospital because of the difficulties of access to the hospital and the congestion around the Castle Lane Junction. Um, but, but it does seem to me, and I'm slightly worried about it, that the Council's decision to suddenly halt that road could put the whole process and project into jeopardy. So I, I have some concerns. I don't have an interest to declare, Chairman, but I am a Governor of Pool Hospital. Can you help us on that, Mr. Richards? I think what I can do is respond to the first part of the question with, um, with regards to um, would the merger potentially have an impact on this investment. And I think I can give you assurances that it wouldn't in the sense that the Royal Bournemouth um, and Christchurch Hospital NHS Foundation Trust actually as part of this proposal are working across Dorset with their acute trust partners in order to deliver the operational efficiencies that this unit will bring. So therefore, they are keen to move forward on this regardless of the <coughs> potential murder issue as part of that process. Thank you. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm the ward councillor for uh, the, the area where the hospital is. And um, we're very concerned that all this building is going to cause more traffic and the roads going nowhere are going to add to it. Um, so I would be quite concerned that this investment uh, is, is not such a good thing if, if the road isn't going to happen. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Mr. Richards? The, the, the only... I'm not an expert when it's to pathology. You know, I'm actually, you know, been on the receiving end of, of the pathology um, service, probably like the majority of us and our families as part of that process. I think, from my understanding, of what they're trying to do here is really invest in technology, really invest in IT, and I think actually the NHS and the NHS are giving them the. IT investment into this facility so that actually, you know, all the sound, everything can be transferred, if you like, in an electronic way that hopefully prevents some of that footfall from transferring it in a physical sense. Chief Executive. Thanks, Chairman. Just, just to reassure members about the location, uh, you're quite right that the, we have continued discussions and, and uh, dialogue with uh, the NHS generally about the layout of the site and the options that were being considered can be delivered without the road cutting through the site itself because uh, they can be accessed from, through other means. So I think there's confidence in the NHS and in the Council uh, that this can still be delivered notwithstanding the current uh, consultation event that's going to be held around Wessex Fields layout. Uh, so members, we are asked to make any necessary recommendations to Council. Um, is anybody going to help us start that process. Um, in the absence of that then from the Chair, um, uh, I think I would uh, be looking to move that we support uh, the uh, recommendations uh, made by Cabinet to Council 
uh, we've heard Mr Richens explaining some detail um, and I think he's probably laid any fears that may have existed. Um, so were you indicating you would second that, Councillor <coughs> Cox? Could, could I? Sorry. Uh, Chairman, I, could we uh, put in there somewhere that adequate um, transport is provided in, in road structures? Uh, much as I might be tempted to take up your suggestion, I think we're being asked to do something slightly different by this paper. This is a Treasury management function, uh, essentially. Uh, it is about uh, the hospital being, uh, through its legal structure, a counterparty to BCP Council. I think that's really the extent of our remit in this paper. I <coughs> don't think we should go any further. I don't think... Um, that's what we're being actually asked to do, but I can understand from a ward perspective why you might ask that. I would like to support the Vice Chairman, but I take your point. Thank yeah. you. Mr Chairman, just a point of clarification, presumably being recommended to full council, it will be debated at full council. There will be that opportunity, should members wish to take it up, of course. Uh, Councillor Dunlop? Um, I'm inclined to agree with you, Chairman. I think I have to say I think it's a great investment opportunity. It's the right thing to do. It, it does show that there are actually some relationship between the council and other public bodies. And I, I take the point of Mr. Richards that it is about bringing a, a centre of expertise, a technology centre of expertise, which in fact is something that Bournemouth Council particularly wanted to do was to encourage that expertise into that area. So I'm fully supportive of this. I've made a move which has been seconded by Councillor Cox. Could we go to a vote? All those in favour, please indicate. Yes. Thank you all very much indeed. Uh, takes us on to item on the agenda, emergency planning and business continuity uh, update. And I think you're going to introduce this report, Mr Stannard. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, what I'd like to do is just go through some key elements to each of the four key sections of this report. So um, if I take you to page 123, uh, paragraph 10, you'll, you'll see there on the 5th of September, the BCP Council implemented a new command structure in full. Um, previous to that point, we were relying on some legacy council arrangements, but on the 5th of September, the arrangements as shown in that table um, were, were fully implemented. Um, just as a point of order on the very last line of that in the uh, bronze operating line, it says in the third box across emergency planning officers and four volunteers. I would just like to be clear that those volunteers are trained to do so. Um, I wouldn't want you to think we've just uh, picked people at random there. Um, moving um, swiftly to paragraph 15, um, the Council's emergency plan is a hefty document, um, but it, it's scalable. And you'll see at the top of page 124 that there have been some um, minor incidents through the course of the uh, six months or so that BCP Council has been in existence that we've had to deal with um, and the plan has held up well in those, um, those in incidents. Um, moving into uh, the uh, European Union exit um, on page 124 and 125, Paragraph 21 is a key element. Um, we've had to nominate a EU Brexit lead officer, and for this council, it's the chief executive, um, and uh, the two-way communications um, from government and the council uh, are routed through the chief exec. Um, page, uh, paragraph 24 and 25 are really key. Um, the council has done some planning, and... Um, we, really, we need to be really clear here that these are not a prediction of what the council thinks are going to happen, but they are planning assumptions and they are shown in detail at Appendix um, EU Exit 1. We've put these two appendix together partly to respond to a very significant number of freedom of information requests that are coming in on a weekly basis. So those, those two appendices are in the public domain and will be pointed to when we get 
um, FOIs that are a very common theme at the moment um, on what are we planning for and how much have we spent. Um, so just quickly um, moving through the report um, into the um, first section which is the work we do with the Dorset Local Resilience Forum and I'll explain some terminology at the top of page 127. Um, mass fatalities and mass casualties um, work that we've been doing. The work there is principally around um, problems with identifying unknown people that are involved in those incidents. So that's the um, crux of those plans. Um, and it's not to be confused with excess death planning, which is around pandemic flus where we, where we sort of know who the people are because they would have um, been resident in hospitals up to the point of um, problems usually. Um, the third bullet point at the top of page 127, uh, major accident hazard pipeline. Um, BCP Council's got 2.7 kilometres of high pressure uh, major accident hazard pipeline, mainly in the Christchurch area, although there is a small element in Paul geographical location. Um, all the other intermediary and secondary pipelines then uh, tend to call off that and they're the ones that are principally um, into residential areas in uh, Bournemouth, Christchurch and Poole. Uh, what pipelines? Gas, gas, major, yeah, they're all gas, sorry. And uh, they, they, they run in at about seven bars, so they're really high pressure and we'd, we'd know if they went up. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. happy, happy, happy to take any questions there. Um, I think um, Thank, thank you, Chairman. The, um, the whole comprised of receiving information from central government, uh, feeding information back up through a regional command structure, which is led through the Chief Executive of Devon? Cornwall County Council, um, Peter Norris. Yeah. Um, so I get regular communications, we feed information up, we've fed information up about the uh, issues we have around potential uh, for transport congestion around the port, for example. Uh, that's probably the one issue which is um, unusual for us. Um, other issues like um, uh, I the, the workforce, whether people are likely to go back, as EU nationals might go back to, the, uh, to their country of origin uh, during a Brexit. We've flagged that. Those are issues that are common across the country. Um, we have a particular issue around port health, potentially with an increased requirement for port health uh, following Brexit and that will depend on the shape of a deal or a no deal. Uh, so have those conversations we have then regular telephone contact. Uh, the Secretary of State actually has carried out two telephone uh, conference calls personally um, and then we have regular um, work within the Council. There was a meeting this afternoon. Uh, in fact we had a day's emergency planning for all of our gold officers including myself at the same time as South West uh, Council's meeting which uh, Peter Hakin attended on our behalf from Environmental Health. Uh, so we've got a good, good set of contact, good set of information. Uh, however, I would not like to predict uh, the form of, uh, of uh, EU exit because I think that is one for the politicians. Very wise, Chief Executive, very wise. <laughs> uh, Vice Chairman. Um, can I ask, uh, paragraph 29, uh, can I ask what happens to the money if it's not spent? Standard. Yep. Um, I, could, I could be slightly facetious and say it will be spent, but um, the, the gut, in, in technical terms it's paid as a Section 31 grant, which means that technically it has no terms, um, strict terms and conditions, so the Council can apply it as it sees fit. Councillor Strickley. Yes, Jim, it was really on the financial implications. Um, it appears that excluding the uh, Dorset CCU, we have £274,200 in the budget. And it's predicting an underspend this year of £16,000. 
So how are we spending £258,200 this year on emergency planning? Do officers involved automatically get additional pay just because they're involved? Or how, how are we managing to spend over a quarter of a million pounds a year when we haven't had any major issues? Mr Stannard. Okay, the, the, the core team um, is made up of um, five individuals um, um, and that's the uh, base budget uh, core team for emergency planning and business continuity and obviously the major um, work is planning for emergencies, not uh, responding to emergencies. So we have some very significant and very important plans that are done for BCP Council and in conjunction with our partners. Um, yeah, sorry, Chairman, but who is this planning team that's costing us a quarter of a million pounds? Mr. Stars? Um, they're council employees uh, located across the two um, main uh, civic buildings. Um, some are located here in Paul and some are located in Bournemouth. And they're all managed by me. So, quick question, it goes back to paragraph 29 again. Um, you know, there, there's a statement there that we are leaving on the 31st of October. Um, obviously, if there's a deferment or anything like that, I'm assuming that the central government will come, come up, cop up with more grants to all local authorities around mm. the country. Um, and the, the sums of money, if we're getting 703,000 for the current uh, situation is mind-boggling and do you think of all the schools, roads and hospitals and other things that we could have done if we hadn't got into the mess that we are in? Thank you. I'm not sure there was a question in there, Councillor Andrews, but I think we've taken your point. <laughs> Councillor Dunlop. Um, just a quick one. I, I can't help but be slightly distracted by the, 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 risk, the list of the, the risks and assumptions. Mm. You said that these have come from central government, yes, mainly? Um, they, they are our own risks. They are, they are BCP's um, own risks and our own assessment of uh, planning assumptions, but we have used the government and, and indeed other organisations planning as, as an aid memoir to draw that list up ourselves. Okay, I just noticed at the bottom of page 130 there are three risks that are particularly associated with a no-deal Brexit. And I can't help wondering that those risks should probably be duplicated for the event of no Brexit. It's kind of, uh, there's a, a, a potential for some issues if there is no Brexit. And I, I'm not trying to be smart here, I mean, it is a fact that we've, uh, there's on some of these I talk about um, disruption, large-scale disorder in certain things. I think we need to recognise that it, it could happen if there is no Brexit. Um, noted and fair point, we will, we will take that on board and we'll probably uh, adjust those words accordingly. So if there are no further questions or comments, uh, could we go to the recommendations? Uh, we are asked to note um, the four uh, areas of arrangements and activities uh, for the Council. Uh, can we agree to note those, but could we perhaps do that by a show of hands? All those in favour, please indicate. Okay.